So um, continuing from that, I would like to share with you how we did it. So how we tried to solve a problem that was really irritating me um, by using agile methods and using lean, lean startup methods. So let's go back in time a bit. Let's look at 2015. Does anyone remember what you were doing in 2015? Yeah, okay, 2015, let's say for my country, so for Austria, this was a pretty big year. Um, things changed a lot. Um, that was for the country. For me personally, um, I was actually in a state of, let's say a little bit of a burnout. Um, I'd been jetting around Europe for a bit more than three years, uh, trying to help my clients, you know, go more agile and like help teams um, to uh, implement Scrum or Kanban or whatever. Um, and I'd just been, you know, like, let's say I was better friends with the people working at the airport than my actual friends. And I was really wondering, you know, why, what am I doing this for? So I was really seeking a purpose. And I decided, okay, you know what, it's 2015, I've been doing this for over three years, I'm gonna take a break. I'm going to go traveling, I'm gonna see the world, I'm gonna write a book, I'm gonna, I don't, I don't know, I had loads of plans. But as we know, things change and we need to react to that change. And in 2015, this was actually the reality um, in, in Austria. And so of course, it, it felt a bit strange, um, you know, going on my own little finding myself trip if, you know, Austria was being overwhelmed with people needing help. So in 2015, over 150,000 people came to Austria trying to seek or seeking asylum. Um, over 150,000 people coming from Syria, Iraq, Afghanistan, Iran, and a lot of other countries, but those are the four main ones. Um, 150,000 doesn't sound that much, but actually we're a country of 8.7 million. So that's actually quite a lot of people for us. Um, we were um, even ahead of Sweden in terms of how many, like uh, per capita, so refugee per capita. We were uh, before Sweden with that. So we had a lot of people coming to Austria wanting to, to stay in Austria seeking, seeking refuge. Um, I don't want this to be a political talk because that's really not none of my, you know, none of my business. But let's say the government was a bit scared to react because no matter which way they would react, they would make a political statement. They were completely overwhelmed. So what happened, because you know, there were people needing help, the civil society stepped in. And civil society stepping in in Austria means actually hundreds of you know, initiatives, sorry, hundreds of thousands it felt like it. So so many initiatives being um, uh, started, so many people um, volunteering, it was, it was crazy. Like everyone was going down to the train stations, helping people, um, uh, handing out food, handing out clothing. It was, I've never seen our country in a state like that ever before and never again after. Um, so really everyone wanted to help. And so of course I did as well. So I started volunteering in um, asylum, uh, it was a refugee camp, so uh, places where people were sleeping. Um, and it was terrible. It was complete and utter chaos. Uh, there was no leadership. There was no, you know, like, um, what's our goal behind this? Why are we doing this? What's the next steps? There was, there was just no, like, management slash leadership at all because everything had to be, you know, sprung up within a second. Um, so I got really frustrated seeing this and, you know, the, it was just really frustrating. So I decided, okay, what can I do? You know, I'm a volunteer. Okay, as a volunteer, I can't really change the system. I can't really help a lot. So how can it be, become part of the system? So then I had a look at uh, jobs and I found um, this really great, um, well, it looked like a really good opportunity for me to really change something from the inside. So I went and wor started working for the Austrian Integration Fund. So this is a, um, let's say the operative, um, um, operative uh, institution of the government um, uh, working for the uh, integration ministry um, and yeah just working um, every day with refugees with immigrants with people coming to Austria so Austrian integration fund and I was actually their first um, we call it the trainings for um, value and so the valiant orientation courses. So I was their first trainer, which is why I was also all over the news um, for about three, four months. Because, you know, if you call something valiant orientation courses, of course, everyone's going to go, hold on a second. You're going to talk about our values. What are our values? Well, you know, is this, you know, like dumplings and lederhosen? Or like they actually said that in the newspaper. Um, or what does that even mean? 
So really what we did um, in those courses, and it was, it was fantastic because I, um, yeah, I was the first trainer actually to be um, hired for that job. And in the end we were 160 people, so about 80 trainers and about 80 um, translators. And um, so we, yeah, we were teaching refugees mostly, some immigrants, but mostly refugees, what it meant to now start a life in Austria. So we, when we say values, that actually means that we did an eight hour um, course on you know what what does freedom mean? What kind of freedom do we have in Austria? What's religious freedom? What's freedom of sexuality? Freedom of um, opinion? You know, or what solidarity? What is our um, what's it called um, legal system like? What's our education system like? Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. So let's say basic information. So it was a really, in my opinion, very valuable course. Um, so for me, it was a great time. I did this for quite a few years, but after a few months, you know, I'd already gained so much know-how because really I was traveling all around Austria, traveling from asylum uh, camp to asylum camp because of course people weren't able to come to us, we came to them. So for me, it was a really good experience to see asylum camps, to see, you know, how, how it works, um, how people are living there, you know, what they're doing every day. I got to learn how, um, what, let's say, what refugees, need what refugees um, are, yeah, how, let's say what their culture is like, because not only working with refugees, but also with the translators that I was working with, I understood more and more about the culture that people were coming from. And also, um, I understood what information was implicit information, what information was explicit information about this country, about our country. Um, and things that to me were absolutely obvious were not, because you know, if people come from a different culture, yeah, it's gonna be different. And so these are the kind of things that I learned and I'm really grateful for having had this job. And um, one of the main things that I learned about, you know, integration and about, you know, arriving in Austria and about being a refugee and, you know, as an agile, co former agile coach, I was always working in impediments and, you know, how, how does this, um, how, what do we need in order to get somewhere and in, in that way to get to um, receiving my asylum papers and to be able to live in Austria, I saw that the main problem, the main impediment was really, everyone was just waiting. Waiting, waiting, waiting. Waiting in asylum camp for uh, learning how to speak German, you know, like waiting for German courses, waiting for um, uh, like soccer match somewhere where as a refugee I'm allowed to actually um, play with Austrians. Uh, waiting for an interview in order to get my asylum um, check in order like waiting 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 so every time i was speaking to people they were to refugees they said well i'm just waiting for this oh i'm just waiting for this oh i'm just waiting for this and i don't know how it is for you guys but for me waiting is so inhumane you know it's so passive you can't actually do anything like super frustrating so i said okay how can we change this how can we solve this waiting time because you know, this is time wasted. This is lives, you know, this, these are real people. They don't, they need, you know, to, keep, to get a grasp of their lives again. And if we, if we, 10 minutes? <laughs> Sorry. Um, for them, um, if we want them to integrate and to, you know, to be a valuable member of the society, we need to, we need to give them more opportunities. So anyway, so then I had a look at, you know, what do they do all day? And I saw that, of course, as any person who has a, a mobile phone and Wi-Fi, they're going to be watching videos, watching movies. It's very normal. I would be doing the same thing. So I was like, okay, hey, dear boss, how about... I went back to my boss. How about we actually, you know, split the courses up into little YouTube videos, and um, and do like two two minute short clips on the values and certain orientation aspects? Because we've got these eight hour courses, we have the information. We have actually have a media team. We've got great translators. We've got great cultural experts. How about we make videos? And he went, "That's a fantastic idea, but not our focus." So, like, okay, this is interesting. You know, it's in our name. But sure, okay, fine. Can I do it myself? He's like, yeah, yeah, just go on. So it's like, okay, I'll do this in my leisure time. Um, I'm really bad at making videos. Like, I have no idea about how to do that. So it was, you know, very lucky that I was uh, in one of those courses and I had this discussion with a Syrian and he's like, oh, I can't find a job in Austria. I'm like, what do you do? You know, like, there's so many jobs. What do you do? He's like, oh, I'm a, I'm a video uh, videographic expert. I'm like, okay, well, come to me after the class, we'll talk. So um, it was kind of a win-win situation where he, um, he went, so I had the input, I had the content, and he knew how to do it. So we actually, within a few weeks, we created our first videos. 
Um, this one is about you know, finding, finding friends in Austria and how you can introduce yourself to your neighbors, because it was actually one of the main, let's say, cultural aspects or cultural situations where the two cultures would meet, and there were so many misunderstandings. If you want to hear the full story, ask me afterwards. Um, so anyway, we started making videos um, on meeting neighbors, on uh, how to write your CV in Austria, how to find a job, you know, like how to actually search for a job. The main aspects of what you need in order to integrate in Austria. Always two to three minute clips. Um, and then we had, let's say we had two issues. Two, well, yeah, two issues, two impediments with that. Firstly, Ahmed, the Syrian um, videographic expert, he's just one guy. It takes a while to make a good video. So we kind of had a bottleneck in, bottleneck in that. And, then, and you know, I'm really not good at this. And also it was something where I was like, ah, I have so many other things to learn. I can't learn that now as well. And secondly, I was a bit frustrated because it was just one more initiative on the market. You know, every, everyone was doing their own thing. And you know, now we're doing videos. So it's just one more of those that's hundreds of initiatives out there trying to help refugees. How would people find out about it? Yes, we've got YouTube as a distribution channel, but how will you find it? So in the end, I was, you know, I was driving home with my brother. It was like a 10 minute drive. And I was talking about how frustrated I am and how every time I'm in, the, I'm in my course and like teaching refugees, whenever they ask me something, I have to write another um, another website on, onto the whiteboard. And in the end, after my eight hour course, you would see like an entire wall of links where they have to go in order to find information for how to integrate. So um, I was like, why can we not have just one single um, website or something, one platform where you can just go and you have all the information available to you if you come to Austria? And he just looked at me, he's like, well, if that doesn't exist, why don't you just do it? It's like, well, Ha ha, sure. He's like, no, seriously, why didn't you just do it? I'm like, yeah, okay, but you know, what would I name it? Like, I'm refugee or what? He's like, yeah, sure. So we found it. I am refugee. Um, I bought the domain name the, the same evening. Um, we sat down, I think, that, that weekend afterwards, started you know, drawing wireframes, started thinking about how we're going to do this. I mean, I had the content. I knew what people needed. I had been talking to refugees for like, this is about half a year after I'd started the job. Um, so I had all the information. We just need to program it. So that's what my brother did. Um, so we just started doing that. Um, and actually, we decided we're going to be the one place where if you need in, if you need any integration information if you so let's say if you're new in austria and you need any need to know anything about austrian culture austrian society anything that you need in order to be successful you should see it in one single place so it should be really one platform of course translated into several languages because google translate actually wasn't that good back then yet and if you ever I don't know, learned Arabic or have anything to do with Arabs, um, Arabic is not just one language. There's actually you know, a lot of nuances with that. So Google Translate is having a, uh, quite a difficulty translating. So we decided to translate it, et cetera. So how do we do it? Um, we started this. And we actually realized within a few weeks that now we're not just you know, a charity organization or whatever. We're actually a startup. We're actually one of those so-called lean startups, because really, if a startup is a human institution designed to deliver a new product or service under conditions of extreme uncertainty, I think we kind of fall into that definition. Because 2015, 2016, 2017, uh, Austria was in a condition of extreme uncertainty when it came to how to handle the refugee situation. So we decided we're actually going to work with you know, the, the lean startup method as an agilist, I think that's a bit obvious. You know, we're going to start building, we're going to start measuring, and then we're going to start learning, and then we're going to pivot. And you know, we continue doing it because we need to get fast feedback and we need to improve. So, how do we do that? How do agilists start um, a product? We start with a vision. So, what was our vision? Our vision that was that was that by the end of 2018, so that's a bit outdated by now, every refugee seeking asylum in Austria should be handed the website directly in order to prepare for his or her new life in Austria. Thanks to all the information found on the website, every refugee should be empowered to have the same chances for personal success in the long run as someone who has actually been born in Austria and is thus automatically part of the system. So that was our definition of integration. That was our definition of what we wanted, or our vision, for the product. 
Um, what do you do or like how do you how do you continue from there? Well, you need a team. Uh, I was on my own with my brother. That's nice, but <laughs> you need more people. So um, we built an intercultural, interdisciplinary team. So we had lots of people um, who were actually, you know, former refugees. We had people who were migrants. Um, we, how did we find those people? Um, we actually um, wrote uh, like a job description and put it online on, you know, like NGO jobs and uh, places like that. Um, and I gotta say, the people who helped most and the people who are still on the team are actually the people who were not my friends beforehand. So of course I had lots of friends, you know, who called me up and said, oh, I really want to help, you know, can you, do you need a translator or do you need someone here and there? Um, and it was great, but none of them stayed. They all helped for a bit. Um, whereas the people who did stay, that's the people who are on this um, photo, they're actually the ones who applied because they had heard about it, either via social media or um, on the uh, job, um, what's it called, uh, job portal, and they applied. Um, so really, they stayed for the vision because they thought it was really important. They stayed because um, the, the team itself was really cool, and they stayed because they actually could try something new. Um, so you know, when you look at um, the autonomy, mastery, and Thank you. Purpose, it was those three aspects, why people stayed. We're still volunteering. We're still, these are all volunteers who do this in their spare time. Um, some of them have gotten a bit of money out of it, but very, really not worth mentioning. Um, and they all stayed for those three reasons. So it's true, those three. Um, so how do we do it uh, in terms of process or in terms of how did we organize our work? Uh, of course, we used Trello. Um, making it the work visible, you know, breaking it down, um, actually prioritizing it. I prioritize it mostly, and then actually working iterations. So anything from, we, you know, we tried lots of things. So anything from meeting up once a month, um, doing a retrospective and a sprint planning, um, to actually doing a team day every few months where we do an entire day and we don't just um, do a retrospective and planning. We also do um, co-creation, so co-working together. So we tried several different things, but I think those are the most important aspects of it. Um, and then we started building. So how do we build it? Firstly, we um, said, okay, well, agile means customer orientation, so we need to have a look at what our users need, and we're gonna actually work from there. Um, when it comes to what our users need, we actually use the language of the refugees. So, I mean, in English, it doesn't translate that well, but as a, um, in German, uh, refugees were not using the proper words for the legal system because it's a legal system, it's not that easy, um, but they were using abbreviations, so we were actually using the same, the same language. Um, meaning that if you come to Austria, you're either somebody who's a refugee and seeking refuge, so you're not allowed to work, you're not allowed to go, um, yeah, you're not allowed to work and you're not, you don't, you're not allowed to uh, rent an apartment. So those are the main differences. Whereas once you get your asylum papers, you are allowed and should be working and you need to find an apartment. So this is actually a legal requirement. So depending on which um, legal status you have, your um, path to integration will be different. So that's what we tried to do here, is we said actually, are you still waiting for asylum or are you already recogni a recognized refugee? And then we also saw that a lot of people wanted to help, um, but they didn't know where to go because there were hundreds of initiatives out there. Um, and so we said, okay, we're gonna do something for volunteers as well. But we did focus mostly on waiting for asylum and recognized refugees because of course you have to prioritize your, uh, where you spend your energy. Um, we also said, okay, it needs to be simple. So uh, very simple clicking, it needs to be visual, it needs to be visualization, and it needs to be, when I say simple, you know, refugees, it's the first time ever that refugees were a digital user group. Like never, ever before. No one had any idea of, you know, how do they interact with digital products. And what we said is, okay, well, we've got refugees means I used to be CEO of Austrian Airlines in Damascus, you know, high educated, highly educated and, you know, big boss back then to I grew up somewhere in the midst of nowhere outside of a town outside of um, you know some village in the middle of Syria and um, I never learned how to read and write so it can be from here to there 
anyone, more or less. You know, refugee is it's a group of people that's completely diverse. So it shouldn't be patronizing. It shouldn't be. Um, it should be for all education levels. It should be for all interests. That was important to us. Um, as I said, four languages, of course. Then we said, OK, well, how do we work in um, an agile way? We work in terms of, OK, let's use visualization to break down complexity. So the so-called integration sector is a super complex um, uh, sector. And what does integration actually mean? Because everyone always talks about, oh, you need to integrate. Well, what does that mean? What's my first step? What do I do? Everyone will give you a different answer. So we said, OK, let's just, let's just you know, call it by its name. What does integration mean? Well, if I'm waiting for my asylum, I should probably learn German. You know, that's part of integration. I should maybe you know, do some volunteering because I'm allowed to do that. I can meet lots of friends there. I can, um, I can get like a paper saying, yes, I, I did some volunteering, so that's good in Austria. I can actually um, uh, get some education so I can go to university if I need to. I, want, I should find some friends. Um, so these are all aspects of integration. So let's just call it by its name. Same with the, um, if I already have my, my asylum papers, I should find a job. OK, what does that mean, actually? I should find an apartment, and I need to go register at the Austrian Integration Fund, which is the company organization I was working with and working for. So let's, let's break it down. And also, when it comes to visualization, you know, a picture helps so much more than just saying it. So we worked a lot with visualization, which is, for the agile world, is very obvious. Um, yeah, the reason why we did this, not only because of com breaking down complexity, but actually, if you think about it, in the agile world, we also do this in order to foster empowerment, in order to foster self-organization. If I know what options I have, I can choose one of them. So if you know, if I talk, if I'm a refugee, if I'm a refugee, and I talk to an Austrian that I meet, and I ask, okay, what do I do in terms of integration? He says, well, you should go to uh, the district number X and go to this German class. I'll be like, okay, great, yeah, sure. Um, I have you know kids, and I can't watch them during this time, so it's not going to be possible. But if I have the option of, hey, these are all the things I can do to integrate, I can choose which one I take. Um, it's a completely different story. So it's all about empowerment and self-organization of my path to integration. So um, that's what we use visualization for. Also, uh, Golden Circle, Simon Sinek, probably everyone's heard of him, um, start with the why. The way we organized our website is actually to say, um, OK, so you've got these integration steps. Um, why should you take them? Like, why should you take that one step? For example, why is it actually important to learn German? Because really, there's so many immigrants in Austria, you'd probably go, you know, live every day with just, for example, speaking Turkish. You know, we've got so many Turkish immigrants. Why do I need to learn German? Um, why should I volunteer? What, why does that make sense? So we really started um, with saying why it is important, and then to say, OK, well, what does it actually mean? So when I'm talking about volunteering, there were so many, um, uh, there was so much gossip about, you know, what does volunteering actually mean? A lot of people thought it means 30 hours unpaid work. No, that's not what volunteering is about. So to actually say what it is, and then to say how you can do it. So how can you actually, which places can you go to? Um, where can you find it? If I live in the midst of nowhere, I should be able to do it exactly like uh, if I would be uh, in the midst of Vienna. So really to empower people to get, um, to get to, uh, to do integration the way they need to do it. So, yeah, that's, so that's how we structured, uh, how we build our product. Then we said, OK, let's measure it. How can we measure it? Well, we can measure it um, in terms of, yeah, getting feedback. So um, what do we use? We use Google Analytics, obviously. It's free. It's great. Use it. Um, we use personal interviews. Also great, uh, very important. Luckily, I was still working as a trainer, so I had, uh, you know, I had contact with refugees every single day. And thirdly, and that was really interesting, from Google Analytics, we learned that we can use Facebook. And this is really, please use Facebook. Please use the Facebook page as somewhere where you can get feedback. It's great. You know who your users are. You know who's clicking on what. And just a quick story, um, we used Facebook um, uh, like Facebook ads, so we got free grants from um, from Facebook. You know, for the first time, I would say thank you, Facebook, um, and we got free free money from them. And we um, so we we 
uh, posted ads. And we got, uh, it said, well, if you want to have people who are more left wing, people who like refugee groups, uh, like groups on Facebook, then you've got 24,000 people that you can reach with your ads. So we're like, okay, cool. So we published them. And the next morning I woke up and we were, there were so many right wing, disgusting comments on our page. It was unbelievable. And we're like, okay, what's going on? What, like, we, we have these ads out, but they're for people who are left wing, who are pro refugees. What is going on? So then we had a look, and it seemed um, that there are over 18,000 people in Austria out of 24,000 who actually like um, left wing groups and left wing pages just to troll them. So in the end, when we clicked, okay, we don't want any more right wing people, we had 6,000 people left. Okay, so this is, it's interesting. You learn from these, these um, pages. Um, and then we learned. So the first thing we learned um, is that our name is the wrong one. So we changed it because I'm refugee. There's lots of reasons, but really, I'm refugee is in English, whereas we're in Austria where we speak German. Secondly, um, if you come to Austria and you're a refugee, you don't want to, ha to have to stamp I am refugee on you anymore. So we said, okay, was, wie, warum in Österreich means what, how, and why in Austria. Those are the first words that you learn when you, speak Ger when you learn German. It makes sense. Secondly, we actually, because of this, we pivoted because after you know, a while, so we found in early 2017, 2017, 2018, very few refugees came to Austria. Um, and where on the other hand, we actually have 1.3 million um, foreigners living in Austria in a country of 8.7 million. So by changing the name from I'm refugee to what, how, why in Austria, you actually get an entire new um, user group, which when it comes to integration, it doesn't matter if somebody's a refugee, if somebody's new in Austria because they're an expat or somebody who came along with an expat, really doesn't matter. So we changed and we got a new user group. On the other hand, um, what we also did is um, we got an app. Not because we wanted one, but because somebody came up to me um, that I met at um, a Christmas party, actually, a Syrian named Bila, and he came up to me, he's like, hey, you know what you're doing is pretty cool, but actually you don't have an app, do you want an app? I'm like, uh, what? <laughs> he's like, yeah, sure, I'll buy, I'll build you one. I'm like, okay, sure, great. So he built an app. He didn't just build an app, he also built a wiki style app. So now, you know, whereas I was the, I was the impediment in terms of, or a bottleneck, in terms of putting content onto the website, now people could do it from anywhere. So if you see a course that's not registered on the website, anyone could add it. It didn't have to be me. So that's, that's how we, um, yeah. so that's how we um, pivoted from only for refugees to actually um, being a crowd um, information um, app for immigrants as well. In terms of funding, just to close this off, in terms of funding, I think that's the main difference between a for-profit and a non-profit organization. If we would have wanted funding, we would have had to pivot properly. We would have had to become one of those organizations, like the hundreds out there um, in Austria who do you know, German classes or help with, um, with getting work, etc. We said, no, we want to be the one platform, the one spider in the web that gets everyone together. We're not gonna you know, invent something that's already out there in the market. We just want to bundle everything and we want to visualize it. That's all we want. Because of that, we never got any funding. Like, there's no government funding for that. There's no funding generally. Um, we didn't have a business case, so of course we're not gonna get, you know, like some other kind of funding. So that's where we said we need to stay true to our vision. So we accept that we're not gonna get funded. That's fine for us. So that's the main difference. As a for-profit organization, we would have had to pivot. And that's where we're at right now. Um, this is how much impact we had, which if I look at the numbers, they're really low. For my standard, they're super, super low. But actually when talking to other, um, to other organizations who work with refugees, they're pretty good apparently. Especially when you look at the, um, well, let's say, if you consider that most families, have, most families of refugees have one phone for all of them, um, we can probably triple that number. You know? um, also, in terms of YouTube, how people use it, um, most refugees actually download the, the video and then send it to all their friends. They don't, they don't copy the link. They, they sent a screenshot, they sent the video itself. So it's, 
these numbers, you know, I don't know what they mean. We know that people look at it, but we also get a lot of feedback via, well, actually, uh, via friends of friends or via Facebook or via the feedback form on our, um, on our website. And we get lots of, you know, like little stories of how, I don't know, people became friends because they uh, met over one of the links on our website or how somebody went back to school because they saw on our website that that's actually possible in Austria. Or like they watch our video on how you can write a CV for an Austrian company and th that's why they got a CV. So we got lots of like personal little stories of how this helped them. So really that's it's not the numbers why we continue, it's the stories. Um, yeah, Agile is not only applicable for profit organizations, it's also applicable for non-profit organizations. So if you want to stay in touch, uh, let me just go through. If you want to stay in touch, um, please follow us. Please contact me. Um, I'll be here until today, early afternoon, if you want to hear any more stories about refugees and integration in Austria. And before you leave, because we did this exercise in the very beginning, um, when you leave, please either grab somebody completely new out there or grab the person that you were talking to um, before already and discuss again how with the information that you have now, how you, know, the, you can use the agile mindset, the agile methods to actually change something about our world. Discuss a bit further you know, how you can actually combine the two. So the thing that irritates you the most, plus your skill set and your mindset that you have, how can you combine the two to actually make this world a better place? So discuss that in the break. Thank you very much.